Our final speaker for this session, <coughs> before we have some uh, questions and answers, is uh, Viru Kesivisvanathan. I hope I said that right. Uh, who will be pre presenting on Next Generation Research, How You Do It. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm an academic urologist from University College London, working currently at Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. Um, thank you for the invitation to speak. It's a real pleasure. Um, I'm going to speak about something quite different to what you've heard so far. Um, this will probably be one of the few talks that doesn't focus on PSMA PET. Um, however, it does have parallels to the journey of PSMA PET, and I think both journeys can learn from each other to try and help the research and the specialty forward to help our patients. So uh, when I began as a young doctor interested in academia with a research interest in prostate MRI, um, I really couldn't have imagined that five to 10 years later, we would have ran a multi-center international study, publishing it in the New England Journal of Medicine, leading to a change in guidelines around the world. And really, prostate MRI has been the most important advancement in prostate cancer diagnosis for the last 25 years. So this is a bit about that journey and maybe some of the things that I've learned along the way. So the first thing to do is to establish the problem. And really, I think the CT and bone scan equivalent to our setting in prostate cancer diagnosis was trust biopsy. And you can see from this pretty ancient and pixelated picture, um, there's a physician putting an ultrasound probe in a back passage, taking 12 cores from the prostate without knowing where the cancer is. And really that picture and maybe the, the procedure should be confined to the realms of history. Um, when you take those biopsy cores, you can miss the cancers and you can overdiagnose insignificant cancer leading to unnecessary treatment and harm to men. And it can also consume many resources. So our group demonstrated this um, in the precision in the promise paper, which was published there in the Lancet. We showed that the trust biopsy actually misses 50% of clinically significant cancer. So we know that pathways based on PSA screening and treatment trials based on PSA screening followed by trust biopsy aren't great at identifying patients who will really benefit from treatment. So we wanted to propose a solution. So where did that come from? Well, the image you see here is actually the first published image of prostate MRI from 1982. Um, if you try hard, you can probably just about make out the prostate. But things have come on a bit since then. And uh, what you can see here is a multi-parametric MRI. It has functional and anatomic sequences. Um, you can see in this particular scan some nice um, low T2 areas with some restricted diffusion in that right peripheral zone which allows you to target some biopsy cores to where that area is to identify the cancer in a more appropriate way. And more importantly, if you use the MRI and it's negative, it may be a triage test to allow you to avoid a biopsy in that man altogether. So where did we start? We started with a single center proof of concept type study looking at whether MRI targeted biopsy would have any promise compared to quite a detailed reference standard. And uh, true to form, we found it did perform very well in identifying significant cancer, and it did reduce over diagnosis as well. So we brought this to an international group that we formed, um, and this is the START consortium you can see here. Um, I remember this picture really well. Uh, it was in New York uh, 10 years ago. Uh, we were hosted by Samir Tanija at New York uh, Langone University Medical Center. And just after we took this picture, uh, all the sirens went through the building because Hurricane Sandy was coming. But we made sure we got our consensus meeting uh, deciding on standards of reporting for MRI targeted biopsy just before the hurricane came in. And uh, we also, more importantly, decided on a study design which we thought could change practice from a standard of care of trust biopsy to an MRI influence pathway. And um, this is what we decided on. So the precision study was a 500 patient uh, multi-center study uh, in which men with clinical suspicion of prostate cancer were randomized to the standard of care, which was 10 to 12 core trust biopsy, or an arm with multi-parametric MRI. And in the MRI arm, if the MRI was normal, they had no biopsy. And in the targeted biopsy arm, if the MRI was positive, they had a targeted biopsy with four cores 
per suspicious area. So this at the time was the first study in which men with a negative MRI would have no biopsy altogether, and men with a positive MRI would have only a targeted biopsy and not biopsies of the rest of the prostate. So everyone said, you're crazy, what are you doing? But one thing I would say is it's important to try and ask a bold question if you want to be able to change practice. So the primary outcome was uh, clinically significant cancer detection. We also focused on insignificant cancer detection, the proportion of patients um, who avoided a biopsy altogether, and complications. And um, we were told many times we wouldn't recruit to this study, uh, that clinicians and patients wouldn't have equipoise. And uh, we're very pleased to recruit way ahead of schedule uh, across 25 centres in 11 countries. And uh, here are some of the results. So uh, for the patient uh, characteristics, you can see for their age, PSA, family history, and abnormal digi digital rectal exam, that the characteristics were quite similar. So looking at the main outcomes, almost a third of men avoided a biopsy altogether in the MRI arm. Um, far fewer cores were taken in that arm. And despite a third of men avoiding a biopsy, we found uh, far greater significant cancer in the MRI arm compared to the truss biopsy arm. And however you analyze that, it showed that not only was MRI targeted biopsy non-inferior, but it was actually superior to truss biopsy in the detection of significant cancer. Looking at some of the secondary outcomes, you can see for insignificant cancer, MRI, the MRI arm detected less of this, which is a good thing. The maximum cancer core length was slightly greater with the MRI arm. And the proportion of cores positive for cancer was greater with the MRI arm as well. For the 30-day patient reported complications uh, with respect to fevers, uh, blood in the urine, blood in the sperm, blood in the stool, erectile dysfunction, and pain. This is all in favor of the MRI arm. So um, what we established from this line of work was that an MRI targeted biopsy strategy allowed fewer men uh, needing a biopsy altogether with fewer biopsy cores, more significant cancer detected, less insignificant cancer detected, and a more favorable 30-day patient reported complication profile. So in terms of things that I learned from this process, uh, be bold in the questions you ask. Um, think about what will change practice in five years, not what will be safe and what will uh, maybe get a publication now. Um, try and make your study multi-centre and international if you can. Funding can always be an issue, but if you can demonstrate your point across a number of health healthcare settings, it's easier to convince people to change practice. Um, we also were quite pragmatic with what we allowed within the constraints of MRI and how you do the procedures, because we wanted these results to be as generalizable as possible. And I think it is important to help non-expert centers take part in your study. Um, that also helps with convincing people to change practice. So um, we're obviously very pleased that now MRI is part of the standard of care pathway for investigating patients um, with suspected prostate cancer. But we don't want to stop there. Now we have to think about how do we implement these findings so that your average centre can benefit from the trial data. And we thought about this in a couple of ways. The first thing is about training clinicians to use a technology that you've demonstrated is better, which has, of course, parallels to PSMO PET. And um, what we did is we uh, devised a course where we got a group of urologists to look at prostate MRI. And uh, we taught them for two days how to do this, and we assessed them on a randomly selected series of scans and showed they actually were better at doing this after a short course. And um, the principle of me emphasizing the fact that urologists are doing this is because I think, as we've seen from many of the talks today, um, to, to change practice and to move things forward, you do need clinicians from different specialties, um, maybe crossing over and cross-fertilizing. And we've seen uh, Declan in his missions to become a nuclear medicine physician with his recent training. And I hear Michael Hoffman's gonna be on the robot soon. So um, I think uh, we're heading in the right direction. So um, on a serious note, we did actually take this teaching uh, endorsed with the European Association of Urology. And uh, we've taught that to over a thousand clinicians in hands-on courses over the last four years, but there's a lot more work to do there. Um, we then thought, um, how do we make sure your average center actually has good quality imaging? And we realized 
there isn't a way of doing that because no one's actually looked at how to assess MRI quality. So we made up a system uh, from the precision trial uh, called the PQL scoring system, which is now a system which hopefully can help centres reach a standard needed. Um, the last thing is, how do we practically make it possible for such a huge demand for every man who needs an MRI to be able to get one? And uh, the current trial we're working on is called PRIME, uh, which is a study looking at whether biparametric MRI is non-inferior to multiparametric MRI in the diagnosis of significant cancer. That will allow a more streamlined test, which is shorter, cheaper, requires less resource uh, to be carried out across many more centres. Uh, we're running that in 30 centres across 15 countries and hopefully the results will be out in about a year or two. So um, hopefully I've taken you on a whistle-stop tour of uh, our group's journey in prostate MRI, and you can see some of the parallels between where we're going with PSMO PET, and um, hopefully you found it interesting. Thank you.